So I'm here with Rob, who is our CMO at Salsify. And Rob, it's great to have you here. Great to be of course, here. The cloud is a big part of your thesis. And I'd like to just chat to you this evening about one of the phrases that we have in our future of cloud, which is actually a, a piece of your own thinking. And that's uh, amazing because of cloud. In other yeah. words, the whole notion that you can do things in the cloud that just simply weren't possible before. Can you talk a little bit about why that's important to you at Salsify and what you do? Explain a little bit of that background. Yeah, um, so at Salsify, we do product content management software for companies um, that helps them manage all the data around their products. So the images, the attributes, and all that, all that type of stuff. Uh, traditionally, there, there are software products that people will use to help an individual company maintain product data, right? It's called product information management. The category's been around forever. And, um, and just so people know, I mean, this is critical as the lifeblood of e-commerce. I mean, without that product information, you, you haven't got a catalog to sell anything for. That's right, that's right. I mean, you, you, there's, all, there's all kinds of horror stories around this stuff that goes around the industry today. One of our customers, for example, has uh, 30 people whose full-time job it is just to type in product information from the new products that they're bringing online. Um, so they'll get, a, they'll get a new product, it'll be online with just like an image and a title, and the description and all that other information will show up you know, two months later, right. you know, when they get a chance to, to update it. So, so this stuff you know, really has an impact as to how much product that you can sell online, um, even you know, offline uh, marketing campaigns that go on with the, the big um, uh, retailers. So uh, companies have invested in software over the years to uh, enable an individual company to manage the product information. But it's really, really difficult to uh, exchange the data between these two systems. So if you're a supplier and you've got your own system that you've built or invested in to manage your product data the way you like it, and you're exchanging this information along the supply chain to retailers who are going to be selling the product that you manufacture, um, they've got their own way that they like to see the product in their own system, and it's behind their firewall. Right. right? Let's bring it to life with a, uh, a real example, like yeah. in the cosmetics industry, for example. Yeah. So in the cosmetics industry, um, you would have, uh, the whole cosmetics industry, you've got a couple of like, major outlets where people buy all of their cosmetics from. Like Macy's is a huge one, right. Walmart is a huge one, Sephora is a huge one, right? Um, but these companies aren't manufacturing their own products. You have brands like, um, you've got Philosophy, and you've got, you know, L'Oreal has 50 or 60 different brands, and right. Estee Lauder has 50 or 60 different brands, right? You've got Beyonce has her own products. So you've got, uh, these people will manufacture the products, and then these products are sold in Sephora. So if you're manufacturing like a facial cream um, or eyeliner, uh, you have information about the product, such as the size of the packaging, you know, the color of the product. Um, you've got information like all the ingredients in the product that, you, that the FDA requires that you put on your labeling so that people know that they're not using product on their face that's going to cause them to have an allergic reaction, all that type of stuff, right? Yep. So um, these brands will have tens of thousands of products and new products being released seasonally all the time. You've got the fall line that's coming out, right? You've got the winter line that's coming out immediately after that. You've got then the spring line that's coming out immediately after that. Ten thousands of products, Not to mention big different turnover. packages and bundles and other things that they may create from these. Absolutely, right? And then you're doing the same thing all over the world. So you're going to have specific packaging for the U.S., different packaging for England, different packaging for France, right. different languages, right? So um, what will happen is the, these manufacturers will get the information together in whatever system they're using. Then they'll have to export it into you know, Excel or something like that and send it via email to the downstream retailer who's then just got a bunch of these people like basically in a typing pool. Right. Right. I mean, you're talking 1950s style. It's really just a room with keyboards of just banging out the information to get them into their systems so that they can go to market with it. So um, what this means is that companies, like if you're releasing a spring line, your products and all the data have got to be ready months ahead of time in order to allow for the delay that takes place uh, in exchanging this data and rekeying it and getting it into an appropriate place for the retailer. So, so it's a typical problem where you've got you know, the challenges of both producing this data, distributing it, keeping it up to date, and then obviously getting it uh, into a format that works for all these different channels. So how yeah. does the cloud help with this? T tell us a little bit about why the cloud offers, uh, offers an opportunity for us. Well, so, it, I mean, if you think about, like, in contrast, the old school, I've got my system, you've got your system, they're both hidden from each other, right? Um, what the cloud enables is, it's, it's sort of uh, a, like, meeting point where both companies can come that's a totally neutral place where they can both store their data. Not one IT controls it or the other IT controls it, 
um, it's neutral, and that's what's beautiful about it. So we can have one place where, let's say I'm a manufacturer, I can put the information about my products in one system that then you can access right. and pull directly right down and put it right on your e-commerce site, right? right? So it enables that exchange of information between organizations that really just isn't possible any other way. Right. Um, and that's what I mean, like when I talk about awesome because cloud, I mean, you're looking for solutions where the characteristic of enabling exchange between systems and between organizations and between people and between governments. You need a neutral location for those things to happen. Um, and when you find an industry where the, you know, the inter-organizational inter network effect of exchanging information between two, two organizations can, you know, can really add value to both, um, you get you know, really great effects, right? Yeah. So the sort of yeah. so-called cloud effect here is that effectively we're enabling what would have been a disconnected group of either manufacturers or retailers to be able to get connected and actually network together and, and get the distributed information in a way that they can all use their own reasons. That's right. And uh, so let's just talk for one second about what are the challenges still ahead for the cloud, um, both either from your perspective or otherwise, because I can see the obvious opportunity here. Um, oh man, the, so there's a bunch. One is just uh, simply a marketing problem and that the people who can most benefit from cloud technologies are not the technologists. Right. Right. Traditionally, the organizations within companies that are buying uh, software, they're all the IT guys, right? Yep. So the IT guys have their own processes for buying the software. They've got controls and uh, best practices that were true 10 years ago and just aren't as true today. Yep. Uh, but they're still holding, holding firm to those things. And you get a lot less of a marketing guy in some corner who's really suffering from this problem going online and having uh, the vocabulary and the knowledge to be able to go out there and say, like, I'm looking for a system that solves this marketing problem for me, right? right? With the cloud, you've got this great opportunity. You know, I mean, we're, you know, we sell to businesses, we sell software to businesses. There's tons of opportunities for companies like us to sell directly to that marketing guy without necessarily needing IT, because there's right. nothing to install. It's just yeah. an application they sign yeah. up for. Just sign up and use it. Yeah. So. You know, having having those people understand that there are solutions to their problems out there that they should be looking for, um, I think across the board, whether you're dealing with product content management, which we're doing, or uh, any one of the hundred other problems that you could be solving for marketers and for sales guys, uh, and for other non-IT functions out there, um, getting them to know that there's something out there that can help them, I think, is like is, is one of the major challenges. That's, you bring up a great point because really the shift from IT controlling what used to be a resource that was critical to a business to now the business focusing on the actual business task, and having everything else outsourced effectively to the cloud, changes the buying relationship and yeah. also ultimately uh, many of the benefits accrue directly to the business. But it's cutting out IT, so it's a big shift. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 also. It's a delicate balance because you can't like cut out IT necessarily because no, ultimately you've got you to still, enable them still. Yeah, you, you still have to integrate with their systems, yeah, right? Yeah. Very you well know. said. The integration is a very key part of this. Um, but uh, you know they're not going to be going forward. It's going to be interesting because they haven't. They're not going to be leading, you know, the charge to figure out what system we should get to solve this problem. Yep. They're going to be uh, helping, you know, the marketing guys and the sales guys and you know the CFOs of the world um, to make what they like effective. Great. Yeah. Perfect. Well done. Thanks for, having, uh, yeah. thanks for making the time here. Absolutely. So, so let me just wrap up and say uh, the following. So um, Rob, great to be an investor in Salsify. And uh, full disclosure, actually, I, let's try this again. Uh, full disclosure, I'm an investor in Salsify and very happy to be so. I think you're going to be a great example of a company that actually is able to do something uniquely well because of the cloud. Yeah, thank you. I really think so too. Great. Good to have you here this evening. Yeah, thanks.